Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That's better. So um, I think we've heard a lot about AI and what you can do, the different industries that AI can apply and all that. But my aim this afternoon is to ask some very thought-provoking questions on what AI actually means for us. And uh, if you look at the landscape of AI and risk, what essentially we should be paying attention to and how it's actually impacting us on the ground. So just, just to start us off, I want to start with the why, why we're all here. And the reason we're all here is that uh, there's a very big promise for, for Africa, East Africa and Kenya at large in terms of where technology is. I mean, we have uh, over 70% mobile penetration rates. We have a lot of youth uh, above the age of 15 that are doing interesting things with technology. But most importantly, we have more than five out of the 10 fastest growing economies uh, sitting out of East Africa, the likes of Ethiopia, Rwanda, that are actually progging when it comes to technology. But you know, putting this into perspective, we've always looked at the risk in opportunities when we venture into new technologies. But I think it's time we look at the uh, opportunity that comes with every risk, including AI as a technology. And I just want to bring a picture on the level of investment that is being put into artificial intelligence and cognitive uh, you know, a system out there globally. According to IDC, we're looking at about $52 billion uh, that's going to be put into cognitive and AI systems across industry across the globe. I think this number might grow. We're looking at the window of 2021, uh, being that the appetite for this technology is actually very, very high. We might be looking at even a double or triple figure when it comes to that. Uh, if you go into the, a vertical such as retail, you know, the brick and mortar retail industry is coming to, to an end and the likes of Walmart are looking at how they can leapfrog on AI and such technologies to move ahead. Uh, you know, automated customer service is something that has been talked to, uh, to this audience. I think yesterday, today, almost each organization that has a front ending and service to a customer has a chatbot. That's like the first line of response to you know, integrate and talk to a customer. But as this is being improved to be more interactive and understand more how the customer behavior is, there's a lot of investment that is being put into that. And lastly, you know, the sales processes that organizations are trying to implement, they're trying to see how they can increase their efficiencies by pulling more data, but by moving away from big data to smart data where they apply algorithms to it so that it can make sense to have a lean organization with a more impact out there globally. But beyond that, you know, AI has so many uh, verticals and pillars. You know, we talk about machine learning. We've just heard about healthcare, where deep learning is happening, where they pick a lot of patient data and they see how they can innovate around it. There's natural language processing, where uh, platforms such as LinkedIn, uh, you know, before you even apply for a job, they can quickly tell you whether you'll feature in the top 25% or the 10% of those particular applications, just by picking keywords and matching them to what they're looking for. And one key bit about you know, artificial intelligence is the people element. You know, much as we talk about AI as a technology, we must not forget that there's a human interaction at any particular point, and that is what will move AI from what it is right now to the use cases we intend it to achieve you know, later in the future. But you know, one thing we rarely talk about is that, uh, you know, is artificial intelligence risky? Can it work against us? We all talk about the benefits of AI and what it can do for us. Do we look on the other side, the bad and ugly side of AI, if not managed very, very well? I think it's something that we should ask yourself. I ask myself this every day. You know, if AI was used to control autonomous weapons with not the right policies in place, could it be something that will work against us? Uh, we look at social manipulation. We all know about Cambridge Analytica and what it did. We all know how GDPR came into perspective. Is this something that you know, AI uh, has played a part in? And do we need to use AI in a different uh, form or way? We live in an age where there are cameras everywhere. Uh, basically, the big, big brother is watching us everywhere we go. I think even right now, the hotel has cameras and can watch whatever is happening in this particular room. Uh, will this you know, grow into invasion of privacy? This is something we need to ask ourselves on the other side of AI. And can the same machines that collect data on us use the same data against us. I mean, we all focus a lot on the benefits and the positives of AI, but do we look on this other side? 
on what could happen if we flip the coin. But that being said, uh, when you look at risk management as, as a whole, I mean, there's so many pillars and verticals that we can look at to impact on risk. But I just picked on four main areas, if you look at the entire risk landscape, on where AI would actually be and is a game changer as we speak. Uh, first is business decisions. I think artificial intelligence and, and, and computing is changing how decisions are being made in organizations because the whole aspect of the risk management uh, is a function that has moved from a manual process to more of an automated process and data is constantly being used to make decisions even on the risk side because a lot of unstructured data is now being put into perspective and being aligned to risk. Uh, we live in an era where we have smart computers. There's co quantum computing happening. There's a lot of crunching of data that is happening in this particular vertical. And fraud specialists will start dictating complex uh, fraud cases very, very easily using artificial intelligence and predicting data rather than reacting to it, which is, happens most of the time. And lastly, you know, cognitive analytics will allow businesses to quickly tap into that current data that they currently have to make better decisions when it comes to looking at the vertical, such as a risk management framework. But what we probably are aware, not aware about, is that everybody uses artificial intelligence. You know, Facebook does targeted advertising using AI. I mean, LinkedIn, the way you apply for a job, the content that is, comes to your homepage, all that is AI. You go to YouTube when you want to view a particular playlist or song, it will constantly start pulling feed that aligns to what you see each and every particular day. I mean, Twitter is trying to block uh, you know, unwarranted content using AI by just looking at some of the keywords through search engine optimization. Pinterest uses AI to suggest the right pins based on what you view on the app each and every particular day. And the biggest takeaway from this is that they are all focusing on the customer. What does the customer need? What does the customer want? And can our platforms actually speak the customer's language ahead of them? And that's how companies will actually stay ahead just by using artificial intelligence as a framework. But you know, having AI and looking at risks, we definitely have trends that come out of this. Uh, first of all, uh, we are now moving to an age whereby, or a stage whereby risk statements will directly impact business outcomes because of how that particular is being looked uh, from, from a bottom end perspective on every business. And security uh, investments are moving from threat prevention to detection. Companies are starting to become more proactive in how they actually use AI to detect risk as opposed to reacting uh, to it, which has been the case and is the case in so many industries. Uh, we are seeing a trend in data governance frameworks being developed by organizations, by countries, you know, policies. But are we doing enough to actually have this in place and, and look at how we can use artificial intelligence and apply the same frameworks for the better good? And lastly, you know, we, we are going to a, an age whereby a password is not good enough. I mean, all the phones that are being produced right now, it's either you, you have a password option, but you can actually use your fingerprint to unlock it. Some you can use the face. And this is all you know, AI in action. And it's, it's going beyond just improving the logical security to improving how we use our current devices. But you know, one thing we're always afraid of uh, with artificial intelligence is that you know, my role is going to change. I'm going to be uh, made redundant by my company. But I think what happens with AI is that your role will actually uh, change for the better. What you do on each, on each and every particular day is going to be different just because a couple of processes have been changed and automated. Take an example of a risk landscape where you have a treasury manager uh, whose role will probably change to look at liquidity and risk management thanks to how we analyze data using AI and other technologies. I look at an auditor. Uh, possibly an auditor will still do uh, what they do uh, in a day-to-day -day job, but the execution tools might change just because now we are applying AI and other technologies. So if an auditor is not up to scratch with the technologies that will come to replace how they execute on their particular role, they will be replaced by auditors that are up to scratch with that kind of technology. You know, a fraud examiner might move from reviewing just reports you know, performing uh, and performing fraud assessments to actually developing KPI for future cases for business, thanks to technology. 
A compliance manager will focus on cybercrime. Cybercrime is becoming a, an increasing topic to every organization, and that's what compliance managers will start focusing on you know, going forward. And a risk manager will have to be in touch with data very, very well, because uh, data-based uh, interpretation and risk identification are going to be a common norm in each and every particular role. And this is just an example of the risk framework. Uh, in other industries, uh, the roles will also change in terms of what they are planned, what they need to be cognizant of, in, in, when, in terms of you know, adopting this kind of technology. But that being said, the fundamentals of every industry, every startup, any organization will not change. If you want to stay ahead in AI just like any other technology, you will have to be agile as an organization. You'll have to make sure your support lines are up to scratch. You'll have to make sure your effective strategy is actually in place and it's being deployed and if you have ROI cases, they're actually proven and they're working. At the end of the day, if, you don't, if you're not in touch with cutting edge technology, AI is just one of them, you're going to lose out. And the, so, so what I mean by this is that much as a business is supposed to be agile and focus on these new technologies, some basic fundamentals of uh, having success in AI just like any other technologies remain the same. So businesses that will not adopt to you know, be agile enough or to adopt technology enough or even look at AI from a benefit uh, a point of view are going to lose out and they'll be overtaken by new businesses that are adopting the same. But you know, we talk a lot about AI technologies and all that. I like to kind of like uh, bring, it, bring it back home that uh, mindset usually attracts talent and talent attracts culture. And any organization, any country, any company, any corporation that doesn't have a balance of culture will not be agile enough to handle the pace to which technology is actually changing them, AI just being one of them. And how do we balance our culture to even you know, uh, understand as how, how we can navigate through such landscape? That's one question business leaders need to kind of like ask themselves each and every particular day. And in closing, I think AI, just like any other technology, is just as slow as it can be. So what I mean by this is that the pace of technology adoption, uh, AI and the rest, is just going to increase with time. I mean, we, if, if we look at how long it took for the TV industry to even hit uh, 50 million users, I think it's over 10 years. The mobile phone industry took uh, another good chunk of time. Facebook took, I think, about four and a half years. But you know, something like Angry Birds just took 35 days to hit 50 million users. So what I'm trying to bring home is that AI with these other technologies are going to increase uh, how fast they're being adopted by industries. And the slower you are, the, 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 the faster companies will just overtake you by adopting these technologies for the greater good. Uh, that was my time for you today. Thank you. <laughs>